This is going to be the most in-depth yet simplified candlestick psychology video you've ever seen. My beliefs with trading are that uh, 95% of your success is mental and 5% of your success with trading is your technical edge. And so one of the, the philosophies that I also have is that you are the indicator. On our charts, one of the things that I... Um, I, I pride myself on is being able to read a chart like a book, not needing external indicators to determine or to tell me what the market is doing. And so we were finishing up our candlestick psychology training, and I wanted to bring in a bridge version because even if you say candlesticks nah i got that candlesticks it doesn't matter i know i get it engulfing candle xyz i assure you if you keep an open mind with this particular training there's going to be something that you can use in a practical way to simplify your trading and i do believe in kiss right keep it simple um student <laughs> so we'll do it that way this training is designed to transfer a belief system that suggests to go from a novice to a professional trader there are certain objectives that you'll you'll cross right the first objective as a novice trader is your first goal is to not lose money you're just wanting to gain experience and to not lose money as an advanced beginner you're looking to earn money consistently uh, you're profitable month over month, at least on a one trade basis, okay? As a competent trader, you're maximizing your return on your investments. You're looking for a way to say, okay, well, for the past six months, I've been doing 10% every month. I'm looking to increase that to 15 or I'm looking to increase that to 20. So your goal as a competent trader is maximizing your return on your investments. Once you become a proficient trader, you're able to trade your own belief system, meaning you don't need an oversold or overbought indicator to determine which direction the market is going to go in. You're able to say, well, based on what I know to be true about this market, I believe it's going to go up. And that's how you're making your trading decisions. Keep in mind, most of the indicators, if not all, I mean, 99% of them are what are called lagging and I'm just going to put this on the screen okay they are lagging indicators meaning that the price of whatever uh, instrument you're trading be it commodities be it crypto be it forex the indicator updates after the price and so by constantly bombarding yourself with indicators, you're really clouding the most important component of trading, which we get so far away from, it's simply the price, okay? And so don't worry if these, these uh, the drifters, the climbers, the extreme, if that looks foreign to you for now, I'm gonna make sure by the end of this video, you're gonna have a higher and a deeper level understanding of candlestick psychology. And it's actually more simple than you know. The benefit to you in watching this video is that you're going to deepen the conversation. I always say each candle is like a word on a page in a book, okay? Each candle is like a word on a page in a book. And sometimes, we have a lack of comprehension in our reading of the charts because we don't understand the sentence or we thought we read the sentence and we thought we get it's like, ah, yeah, 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 I got it. And so if you're the type of trader that's like, nah, I got it. I already know engulfing, yeah, yada, 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 hanging man, that looks like a doji candle. I don't need this kind of training. That's okay. You're welcome to, to have a closed mind. If you are an open-minded trader, then you'll understand the value of just simplifying what you're seeing. And we're going to take some time to apply this to the market in real time once I go over and give you the explanation. So let's start. 
Now, for the purposes of this conversation, don't worry about the color, okay, of the candlestick. We're going to start, since we have this up arrow, we're going to start with our climbers, which are traditionally in a bullish market or they are our bullish candles. Now, if, if this is your first time learning about candlestick psychology, a bullish candle is, is quite simply a candle whose direction um, increased. Okay. Alternatively, a bearish candle is a candle whose price decreased. So for instance, GBP USD is currently at 1.2953 and it's fluctuating because the market is open. So if that market, let me just put this on the screen. 12953. So if the session opened and the price of GBP USD is 129530, and then by the time the, the day closed, the price is 129830, then that would be a bullish candle. Okay. Alternatively, if the open, let's just say where we are right now is where the market open at 1.29530, if at the end of the day, the market, the closing price was 1.9230, then that would suggest that the candle was bearish. Now, with this candlestick uh, psychology, technically, you can use this information on any time frame. My recommendation is always the higher the time frame, the more reliable the story. When we're talking about being able to read a, a candlestick chart, the lower time frames are like letters, okay? And then the higher time frames are like sentences or words so that you can read the book. And you can look at that as, let's say, like a, um, a daily chart is like a, comp, uh, a simple sentence or a weekly chart is like a compound sentence. And then sometimes the monthly chart could be like a, a full if not a paragraph, a full chapter. And so, again, the psychology of the candlesticks apply no matter what time zone. It's just when you see a opportunity to get involved in a market, when we're going through the, the meaning of these candles, just understand that the higher time frames have more, it, it has more weight to the meaning. Okay, so let's get started. Let's talk through climbers. Let's talk through the, the drifters and let's talk through the extreme bars. And so using our example of an open price, if our price opened in what we like to consider to be the, um, the lower third of this candle, let me get the candle pulled up here. So what we're going to do is go through and adjust these candles. Let me, there we go. So I'm going to adjust this candle size based on this direction so we can break down what each of these mean. So let's say, for instance, we had a candle that opened in the lower third. And let me, let me back up because I want to explain the psychology of the breaking the candlestick down in a third. Now, from your open to your, your, your close, to your high, to your low, there is a tremendous amount of information that is contained in just those four price points. And the better, the better that we can understand the relationship between the open and the close and comparing it to the high and the low, that's gonna tell us a lot about what that market's intentions are. And so, of course, the high is gonna represent the highest point that the bulls move price and the low is going to tell us the lowest point that the bears move the price. And so when we're analyzing these candlesticks, we're really looking at a competition between the bulls and the bears. OK, just a simplified way to look at that. So starting with the three one candle, OK, what that's showing, we, we have our candle split into a third from the high to the low. And this is showing that our candle opened in the lower third and it closed in the upper third, okay? And so that would represent a 3-1 candle, which signifies that the buyers are heavily in charge. 
all right? And if you are in a bullish market, that could be considered a trend day, okay? That could be considered a trend day. Now, alternatively, let's move forward to the 2-1 candle. So what that tells us is that the market opened in the middle two thirds of the candle and it closed in the upper one third of the candle, which means that the buyers got control at the end of the session. Meaning at some point, the candle was the opposite direction and it was all the way down here. And by the end of the session, the buyers were able to, uh, the bulls were able to recover and flip the direction to the candle so that it closed in the upper one third. Okay, so that definitely suggests that towards the end of the session, the the bulls got in control. Now this three two candle is represented by having an open in the uh, in the lower third. Okay, so that would look a little bit like this, and having a close in the middle third. Okay, so this would suggest that there's no clear winner. Okay. There's a struggle in power. Okay. So let's move forward with looking at the drifters as it relates to a bearish market. So I'll just delete that and we'll. So keep in mind that when we were talking about the price of a chart with GBP USD, if, if the open price is 192530 and currently the price is 522, so 192. 29522 if the market were to close right now technically it would be a negative candle okay based on it opening at 1.29530 now with the 13 candle that means we opened in the upper one third even if it's all the way to the top of the wick and we closed in the lower third meaning the bears were in complete control during that session total domination all right total domination now alternatively if we opened in the the um, the middle third right because this number here represents your open this number represents your close if we opened in the middle third then that's showing us that the bears took over and the end of the session was in their favor okay so that's what that's showing now if we were to open in the upper third, keep in mind this is in, re in relationship to a bearish trend, and to close in the middle third, so the one two bar, that is suggesting um, that there's no certainty of who was in charge. Because keep in mind, at some point during that session, the candle would have been all the way down here, and the bulls had enough steam to push it back to this level. So there's no clear. Uh, concept of who's in charge and so we've reviewed the climbers we've reviewed the drifters and let's talk about our extreme cases so with the one two okay opening and closing let's just say we had a candle that opened and closed in the um, the upper third all right so that suggests that the buyers are in charge no matter if the candle is is bearish or bullish okay so even if this was a negative candle at some point the the um the buyers were able to flip that candle from all the way down here or whatever is a third of that candle and push it all the way back up to that level okay so very very strong bullish indication now let's look at the the two the two two candle as far as it relates to the extreme candles. Of course, similar to our three two and our one two, this would suggest no real clear um, bias on who was in charge. This represents a struggle in power. Okay, a struggle in power. So basically, if you're looking at it like a game, they're tied. Okay. Now alternatively. If we were to open and close in our lower third, that is representing a bearish candle, okay? Opening and closing in that lower third is representing a bearish candle. So why don't we hop over to TradingView and we'll make this point a different way, okay? 
Now on my trading view, since I don't traditionally use Fibonacci, I have the Fibonacci line set up to split the, the bar into a third. And so what we're gonna talk about is last week's candle, right? Or the week prior, actually. We'll talk about the week prior and then we'll talk about how you could have participated in the week. Since, since today the market just opened, uh, technically it's still Monday. Let's look at this candle here. Okay, so because I already hacked my Fibonacci tool, I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna measure from the top to the bottom. And I'm going to say, OK, well, based on the the, uh, the theory of one thirds, this technically opened in the uh, upper one third and it it closed right into the the lower uh, one, the lower third. OK, so let's switch back. So if it opened in the um, in the upper third. The market was going down if it opened in the upper third and closed in the lower third yeah it doesn't have to close all the way at the bottom but it closed in the lower third then we would that would suggest that the bears were in charge of that session and so what we could do let's say we were going a week forward or we we're looking and planning our trades for the next week now we're on the daily chart and let's just say we pre were preparing ourselves to trade let's take a look and see where our trading opportunity would come into play so in a situation like this, where you have a rally, traditional technical analysis, what are most traders going to do here? After they see a day like this, most traders are probably going to buy, okay, more than likely. And so from here, what would happen if we just hit sell? Because we know that the week prior, it was bearish. So we were waiting on the market to show us some sort of bullish um, run so that we can get in higher and, and sell sell lower and so even that one trade let's see if we stayed in for two days okay so two days in that trade and it completed the lower third it closed literally almost almost right to the dollar of the uh the lower one third and so that's given us an advantage on how to read price without any other information, okay? And so let's just take it a week forward. So now we have the, um, more than likely we have the new week's candle, okay? Which is the week that we are entering right now. And the market gave us this candle. Now, which which pattern is this? If we're splitting this candle into, into um, a third, we opened and we closed in the middle third. Okay, let's switch back to our reference guide. Okay, let's make sure we're, okay, I just wanna make sure we're sharing the right. So on our reference guide, if we opened in the second or the, the, the middle third and we close in the middle third, then that's showing that we're on an extreme bar. So hopefully we were on the trading view chart if not, I'll explain that in just a second. Hopefully we got that in there. But ultimately, when you're looking at your charts and you're analyzing each each um, candle as it comes into play, you want to make sure we understand, OK, well, who was in power? And even if you say, well, who was in power over the last two weeks or who was in power over the last three weeks, right? Who was in power over the last month? Now, easily you could go to the monthly chart. Let me just close this out. We can exit the replay mode. You can go to the monthly chart and apply that same logic with the candle. Okay, so we could see clearly. I mean, that's pretty obvious, but we can see clearly where in the last month the bears were heavily in charge. And so if we're waiting on some sort of bullish run to Maybe it's going to come up to the middle third and then reverse. We don't know. But at the same time, this gives us a way to be on the other side of the market, which is the right side versus spending all of our time back testing and see what, seeing what happened in the past. Because chances are the past won't repeat itself in the same way. OK, just because we had a, a, a candle that popped up here or popped at this level 
it when it came back to the same area, it didn't repeat itself in the same way. And so this gives us an advantage to be able to forecast out and to be on um, the right side of the market while we're trading our belief system. So take a screenshot of this and then I challenge you to go back to your own charts and do your own studying and applying that to whatever currency, commodity or crypto or whatever you're using to trade and see how it can help you to understand the story better on which direction the market is going. All right. So appreciate you for spending this time with me. If you have any questions and let me know, do you think that this is more helpful than um, having indicators? Do you think indicators are better on the chart or what's your opinion? I would love to hear from you in the in the comment section. So feel free to drop your opinions and um, you may help another trader by just sharing your perspective. So don't be shy. Like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel. And uh, until the next time, take care.